so much better now that I get to come down on the floor and get a little closer. My friends, uh, we get to start today a four-week series in the book of Ephesians. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's, it's a letter in the New Testament, and it's just filled with um, all sorts of really beautiful pieces of our faith. And so over these next four weeks, I'm excited to dive into those pieces. But today we get the beginning, the intro, and I guess I want to set it up with you this way. Um, I want you to think about that excitement that you feel when you have some really great news and you just can't wait to tell someone about it. Right, it's such an incredible feeling. And now I wanna add another layer to it. Imagine that this person that you can't wait to share this news with is someone who you haven't seen in quite a while. Now, of course, with COVID, it's not hard for us to imagine that, is it? And every time we see someone again for the first time, there's this, there's this uh, I think, uh, you almost uh, this just deep, uh, boy, the word's on the tip of my tongue. Euphoric, that's the word I'm going for, euphoric. I was gonna say euphemism, and I knew that wasn't it. <laughs> <sighs> This euphoric feeling that we feel uh, as we reconnect and see each other. Well, in, in today's reading, actually, we get, we get invited in on a conversation that's kind of like that. And even though it's not a face-to-face, it's a letter that's written, you get the same sense of incredible in, uh, joy. And, and for Paul, the Apostle Paul, he's writing to his dear friends in Ephesus. And that's why it's called Ephesians. It's a letter to the Ephesians. And these are people who Paul knows dearly. He first went to them with the good news of Jesus and started their faith community. And now as he's traveled on, he's writing them a letter to encourage them, to uh, uh, remind them again of the spirit that binds them together. And what you hear in his writing is just this incredible excitement, uh, this incredible um, conviction and passion, because Paul, as you may may or may not know, his life was radically changed by an encounter that he had with Jesus, radically changed. And so he went from somebody who, who was doing his best to kill Christians, literally, to someone who now is championing the cause of Christ because of his encounter with Jesus. That changed him dramatically. And so he's passionate about this. And as he writes to his dear friends, he can't wait to tell them this news and to bring them a word of encouragement and hope. And so as we read through this, uh, you're gonna hear his excitement and energy and enthusiasm because he's on fire about this. And he wants so desperately for his loved ones, the people he cares about, to also know this good news deep in their hearts. So that's my hope for you, that as we dive in here and go through this letter these next couple of weeks, that you pick up on Paul's enthusiasm and that you make room to, to hear why he thinks this is so incredible and see how it can impact us. But today we really start by hearing about God's great big plan, God's great big plan for this world and for you and I. An important part of that is recognizing um, who we are or discovering who we are in Christ, Um, who we are and how we live or what we're living for. And, you know, uh, for those of you at home, this is Graduate Sunday here at New Heights, and we have some of our high school seniors here today and others who are preparing. Graduation is in just a few hours, so there's a lot they've got going on today. They just had prom the other night, and it's been a crazy weekend for them. But we're celebrating our graduates, and you know, I think this, these are important conversations for us to think about. So who am I, and what am I living for? And I think Paul speaks into that in a beautiful way today. So let's dive in. We're in Ephesians chapter one, and we're just gonna, right off the bat, we're gonna get the introduction to his letter. So here we go. He says, I, Paul, am an under God's plan as an apostle, a special agent of Christ Jesus, writing to you faithful believers in Ephesus. I greet you with the grace and peace poured into our lives by God our Father and our Master Jesus Christ. So we get this short, sweet, simple introduction. He can't wait to get to this good news, so he's going to launch right into it. But just a quick, hey guys, it's me, it's Paul, remember? And I love uh, this translation that says, a special agent of Jesus. That's kind of a fun way to think of it. But literally, I mean, the things that Paul did was incredible. But he bases all of this in the grace and peace that's poured out into us by God through Jesus. And, and it's that grace and peace that really is the foundation of our lives together. So it's powerful to be grounded in that. But let's see then what happens as he, as he moves into the rest of this with this great news that he can't wait to share. So in verse 3, he says, How blessed is God, and what a blessing he is. He's the father of our master Jesus Christ and takes us to the high places of blessing in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind. He settled on us as the focus of his love 
to, made, to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. So we'll pause there. So you, you can hear in the language used here in the imagery that Paul is excited about the big news of what God has been up to. And he says, listen, from the beginning, even before God laid the foundations of this earth, he had us in mind. He was thinking about us even then. And, and he settled on us as the focus of his love. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I think that's, that's a surprising thing to consider, that God thought of you and I before he laid the foundations of this earth. Like, in other words, you're not here by accident. You're not a surprise to God. or any. You are a gift from God, and God's had you in mind from the beginning. And God chose you, and God chose me, and God chose all of us as the focus of God's love. You know, we grew up with so many different ideas about who God is and what God is like. And Paul really um, sets the record clear here as we go through this letter that we have a God who first and foremost finds great joy and delight in God's creation, in his creation, and particularly in you and I. God takes delight in us. And I think for, for too long uh, as Christians, we've given the world the understanding and maybe even one another that somehow God is just, you know, this angry, judgmental God waiting for everything we do wrong. And what you read here in Paul is it's completely the opposite. No, God delights in us. God takes great joy in us. And actually, uh, as, as we read here about God wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving, God can't wait for us in our brokenness to come home, to return, to receive these gifts. It's with joy that God says, here, let me love you. Here, let me forgive you. Here's more grace and mercy. God does that with joy. God delights in that. that it's really an important way for us to understand what it means to be God's people and to understand what it means to be the church that we are beloved ones. We are gods, and God was thinking about us from the beginning. God's had us in mind all along. We are the focus of his love, and he has adopted us into his family. In other words, Paul says, there's a celebration here, and God wants us to jump in on this celebration of his lavish gift giving. Now, that's one of the reasons uh, we have a praise service in which we sing these songs of praise because we live in response to, all, to God's lavish gift giving. And we gather uh, in the midst of our sinfulness and brokenness, we gather to celebrate because our God is so gracious and merciful. Well, let's see what else Paul says here as we continue on. Uh, in verses 7 through 10, Paul says, Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we are a free people, free of penalties and punishments chalked up by all our misdeeds. And not just barely free, abundantly free. Now let that sink in. Not just barely free either, abundantly free. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him. Everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet Earth. I love that phrase. He says, not, and not just barely free either, abundantly free. Now, this is Memorial Day weekend, and, and we live in a country where we are blessed with incredible freedoms, and we celebrate this weekend our freedoms, those freedoms that we recognize did not come to us cheaply, but at a great cost. But Paul reminds us here of an even more important and deeper freedom. That's an eternal freedom, a freedom of our souls. We are gifted people gifted with freedom in this country and freedom eternally. We have been set free from the sin and brokenness that can bind us. And as Paul says here, he says that we've, we're, we're free of the penalties and punishments chalked up by all our misdeeds. I mean, we recognize as people that we often fall short of what God hopes for us. And not a day goes by that we don't do or say something that we wish we had done differently. 
And how often is it that we just kind of push God out of our lives and go on with what we want to do? And we read here that, well, it's, we have a God who, who uh, sets us abundantly free from the power of all those things that try to bind us. And then Paul uh, lays out an important thing here. He says, listen, uh, God took great delight in making this big plan that God has. And here it is. He set it out before us in Christ, a long range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him. Now, what's he talking about here that everything would be brought together and summed up? Well, he's talking about creation being ultimately what God had planned and hoped for it to be. He's talking about his kingdom fully coming to life. It's the thing that we pray for whenever we pray the Lord's, pre- the Lord's prayer and we say, thy kingdom come. It's God bringing everything uh, to its fullness as God intended. This is God's vision for our lives, our human lives and for this planet that God's kingdom would come fully to life. And we're reminded here that God's been working on this from the beginning, that as God gives us the gift of free will and our sin and our brokenness wreaks havoc in the world, God continues to work against those things, offering freedom and grace and mercy. And then what's so important for us to get as we work through the end of this is that God invites you and I to participate in this plan. God's plan to love and bless and save the world to bring all things together, a big part of God's plan is us. That's what we get to do. We get to partner with God in bringing that kingdom to life. And so as we think today about those questions about who we are and what we're living for, this starts to get to the key of it. We're here to participate with God, to partner with God in bringing God's kingdom to life. So let's see now how um, Paul wraps this up as we think about Um, This plan that God takes such delight in as God has set us abundantly free. Paul says in verses 11 and 12, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living Part of the overall purpose that he is working out in everything and everyone. And then Paul continues and he says, it's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, this message of your salvation, you found yourselves home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. This down payment from God is the first installment on what's coming. A reminder that we'll get everything God has planned for us. A praising and glorious life. Now this kind of sums up the introduction to this letter that Paul's written to the Ephesians. Here he is setting the stage for what's going to follow in the rest of the letter. And you can hear his excitement. You can hear his enthusiasm. You can hear his great hope. Because he has seen this great plan of God. He's come to know God's deep, lavish gifts of grace and mercy and forgiveness. And he wants everyone to know it. He wants everyone to know it and to live it. And so I love this. He says, it's in Christ that we found out, that we find out who we are and what we're living for. Now, we've been hearing about that here as we've gone along. And and we're going to unpack that as we close up here in just a minute. Uh, So what is it in Christ that we find out exactly exactly who we are and what we're living for. What does that look like? But as he's talking here, he says, listen, this is part of God's overall purpose and that in in Christ, we find ourselves free. In fact, we're home free. He says, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. In other words, what he wants us to understand is that the ways that we experience God in this life, you know, we get those moments where, where we go, whoa, that's just a glimpse. So as he says, it's a down payment. It's the first installment. In other words, God has so much more in store for us. God has so much more to come for us. This is just the beginning. It's just a foretaste. A foretaste of the feast to come. So we get this first installment in this life, the Holy Spirit that helps us to know, yeah, yeah, God's got me. God's got this. And now we have the choice as free people, abundantly free people, to now participate with God in bringing this kingdom to life. So what do we find out exactly about who we are as we've gone through this this morning? We find out first and foremost that we are God's beautiful creation. That God had us in mind from the beginning. 
Friends, it's so easy to fall into the trap of believing that somehow we're a mistake or somehow um, something's wrong with us or somehow that God has forgotten us. It's easy to fall into those traps. And Paul reminds us today that, no, there's no accident here. You are created by God. You are a beautiful child of God. God thought of you from the beginning, and you bring God great joy. And so Paul told us this morning that we are the focus of God's love, that we are adopted into God's family, and that we are recipients of God's lavish gifts. And most importantly of all, that we are set free. We're set free from entrapment and sin and brokenness, and instead we are abundantly free as God's people. That's who we are. And so now what do we get to do? What are we living for? Well, we get to live in response to this, in response to God's lavish gifts. And now here's the thing, and and especially to my uh, seniors who are here today and those of you at home, you know, it's a time in life where we are figuring all these things out. Who am I and what are God's plans for me and what's my calling and what is this all supposed to look like? And it's also a time when the world is constantly coming at us and say, well, come over here. I'll show you what will give you life. Come over here. I'll show you what will give you life. And the world throws at us all these things. And oftentimes on the surface, they seem great. But how often do we find that what the world offers doesn't actually give us life? It's a false life. And so we could chase after all kinds of things. We could follow the same paths that so many others have chosen, paths that tempt us with false promises. But God offers us a better way, a better life. If we center our lives in Christ, we can know abundant life. If we allow this good news to define us rather than the world, we can live to be a blessing. And so that's ultimately what Paul is calling us to today and what God invites us into, is to participate with God in bringing all things together to be people who are a blessing, to be people who give life, to be people who show the world what it means to live generously to generously offer ourselves, to generously offer mercy and grace and forgiveness, to be people who teach the world how to forgive, how to heal, and how to give ourselves away. There's no doubt that the last uh, year and a half have been incredibly, I'll say, traumatic. And we've seen our country particularly just tearing at the seams in so many ways And friends, there's only one way that that heals. It's not by some magical political leader who will suddenly make everything right. The way that healing happens is when God's people lead the way. It's when God's people stand up and show others what love really looks like. It's when God's people stand up and show tolerance and show love and grace and mercy. It's when God's people show that there is a different way to live. We get to do that. We are here to be a blessing. So today I want to invite you. I want to invite you as we go into these next few weeks in Ephesians to come with open hearts and minds to discover this good news that Paul's so excited about. And you know, Ephesians is a short book in the Bible. It's just got six chapters to it. So maybe over the next month you want to get out your Bible uh, on a daily basis or just a couple times a week and kind of work your way through Ephesians. Let's read this together and see what God is up to. It's it's powerful. So would you pray with me today? Mighty God, Lord, you know know all that's on our hearts and minds today. And you know, Lord, all that we've been wrestling with and working on and going through, Lord. And the truth is, we forget that, so often we forget that we are part of a much bigger plan that you are up to. And we get caught up focusing on ourselves and uh, in our own little lives and we forget that you have done so much for us. We forget, Lord, that you invite us to participate with you in this lavish gift giving to the world. And so help us to be people that turn from ourselves to you, to be people, Lord, who live to serve, who live to love, people who live to give life. Lord, as we celebrate our graduates today, Lord, we pray your special blessings upon them that, Lord, they would show us all what it means to be your light in this world. So, God, draw us near to you. Renew our hearts and our minds. Help us to embrace this abundant freedom you've given us and to use it 
use our freedom to honor you, to use our freedom to serve one another, to use our freedom to show this world how we are to live. Jesus, we thank you. It's in you that we discover who we are and what we're living for. In Jesus' name we pray.